Hello again. Now what I want to do today is demonstrate how to insert 95% confidence intervals into a power pivot chart. And the benefit of inserting them into a power pivot chart is that as you drill down into particular segments of, uh, of the data set, the 95% confidence intervals will adjust, automatically update and allow you to determine whether as the sample sizes get smaller as you drill down whether they are statistically significant um, still. So that's a really handy um, way to supplementary, it's a really handy supplementary piece of information when you're uh, doing data exploration. So you can, it's fairly easy to insert just normal error bars within a um, within a power pivot and you just go up into the pivot chart tools, layout, error bars and you can just choose what sort of what sort of error bars you want to insert whether it's uh, you know a standard deviation or perhaps a standard error the um, the problem with these though is they're not particularly useful choices that uh, Microsoft have sort of have provided um, as they <laughs> as then they don't really correspond to any statistical sort of test um, and that's where a 95% confidence interval does become really useful because it is a sort of a fairly standardized piece of analysis so if the bars don't if the bars um, don't overlap you can infer statistical um, significance so what I want to do is show you how to insert 95% confidence at interval bars and in order to do that, we first need to insert a. Um, I suppose you need to know what the uh, what the formula is for a 95% confidence interval. And within power pivots, um, you need to use a um, a language called DAX, um, which is I think fairly. I think it's new to Excel 2010. And I'm not much. I'm not very good at writing DAX. So what I tend to do. I just did a search, 95% confidence, confidence intervals in Power Pivot. Didn't actually find any information, so I actually posted a question on the uh, MSDN um, uh, Power Pivot forum, and then the nice folks from Microsoft got back to me and said that I need to create an inter uh, intermediate calculated measure, blah blah blah. First of all, you calculate uh, standard deviation, and then you, using the standard deviation, you can then calculate the confidence intervals. So they came back with these formulas, which I've then put into Notepad here. So I'll just copy that across. So Control C. So we'll go back to my pivot chart. So what we're going to do is click on the pivot chart. The uh, Power Pivot pane pops up, then click on the table name, which is the underlying table which the data sits in. Um, right click that and we're going to say add a new measure. It's going to be called, uh, actually we'll paste it in first. So, control paste, that's good. Call this standard deviation. That's important to put a name in there because it'll be used by the next form, next uh, in the next step check the formula, no errors in formula, that's always really good news. So it's the master table, we're using bill amount, uh, bill total information um, as, the, as, your, as the actual data source. So we click OK. So this will then add a new measure which is standard deviation. It adds it next to the uh, the bar, so we'll just ignore that at the moment, we need to go back and clean that up later on. So the next step is to create the 95% confidence interval, now that we've got the standard, uh, standard error. So we then go master, new measure, and we go this so we will call this 95% CI. I think that should be okay for naming conventions, but the percentage may cause a bit of problem. Okay, yeah, doesn't like the, that's right, doesn't like the percentage, so let's get rid of that. Check the formula, no errors in formula, so that's all looking pretty good. 
so that will then wax in the 95% confidence interval there.